Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel, and welcome to a brand new map series. And yes, it is on Thornton Farm. For those of you who follow me on Facebook and are also members of my Discord channel, yes, you may have uh, seen a teaser from me where I posted a photograph that was, well, not very, um, it certainly wasn't very proving of, of where the new project was going to be, although a couple of you got fairly close with um, uh, the West Coast was one um, was one suggestion and Colborough Park Farm was another and yes I think from the sunset I think even somebody said uh, perhaps I was going back to Lawfolds uh, nope we are uh, here on Thornton Farm and maybe I might call this a classic series I might do uh, sort of rotate uh, some of my maps between uh, things that are relatively new versus things that have been out for quite some time Time. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I do realize that if you go out to YouTube and peruse and search through YouTube, I'm sure you will find hundreds of hours of Farm Sim 17 videos on Thornton Farm. And you're certainly more than welcome to go and watch those. Uh, perhaps you already have watched those. Uh, there have been some of the greatest names in uh, YouTube at least that produce Farm Sim 17 content, have covered Thornton Farm. I've watched many, many hours of these uh, gameplay videos my very own self and have quite enjoyed them. Um, but you know something? We all do things uh, different, and I've got a completely different twist on how I'm going to play this map. The very first thing I want to point your attention to is the upper right-hand corner of the screen where it says early summer that is right folks we are starting this map I have spent probably I don't know six or eight hours of gameplay time getting things uh, positioned to where I want them part of the storyline we are going to be doing some role-playing in this video so do uh, look out for that and um, so we're gonna get started here in the role play here in just a few minutes but I thought I would bring up and show you all the map here uh, now this is uh, Thornton Farm again and what we own is we own fields number 12 13 uh, 14 17 and 18 which obviously these are grass uh, fields 11 and 15 which also are grass fields 9 8 uh, 38, 34, 31, 30, and 29. So we have planted here wheat. <clears throat> we have canola in these two fields. We have soybeans. We have sunflowers. And we have corn. So basically our, you know, pretty much our traditional core products are what is on this map. Nothing extra, no other fancy uh, types of uh, grains or anything. We're going to be obviously covering those with our other series on Snedderton Farm, which is obviously still going uh, well and strong. So I decided to uh, start this map in the first game day of summer, obviously bring you into the series on the first day of summer, simply because, well, we are still very much in the whole uh, planting and seeding and field prep uh, stage with Snedderton Farm and I just kind of thought well you know everyone starts their their series especially with the seasons mod everyone starts their their let's play series in um, in spring and they start through that whole process of field prep and seeding and fertilization and all that kind of stuff well for the most part those things are done for us uh, we do have some fertilization that we do need to do if we bring up our map once more and we take a look at our field prep uh, we still Still need to fertilize all of our fields and we will get that done uh, in due time so um, just a few things that we do have I will bring up the menu just again and show you our animal screen uh, we do have 100 cows and we have 50 sheep and so they are obviously hard at work producing um, the stuff that they produce obviously milk and uh, and wool and of course we are in early summer um, we have a budget of $225,000 that we started off with we've already made hundred and ninety four dollars and I'll go into just a little bit more of that but let me kind of start in the whole storyline and the role play uh, concept here so obviously Thornton Farm uh, takes place here in the lovely uh, area what's known as the Cotswolds within England and it's an area that I have never actually visited but I have visited um, 
the southeast portion of England many, many times. And I tell you what, we do have one chore that we need to do because we certainly don't want Mr. Thornton to uh, to get upset at us. Now, I do not own this farm. Uh, I am just a I am just a worker here on this farm. Uh, I sort of was in the area. I have been doing a multi-year uh, backpacking uh, trip through um, through Great Britain. And um, I sort of ended up in this area and really was sort of, um, well, let's just put it this way. I had pretty much um, spent all of my savings. Uh, I had been doing odd jobs here, there, and pretty much everywhere that I could find uh, reputable work and maybe find a little bit of, uh, of living and stuff. And actually, I started out living in one of those little apartments right there over by the pressure washer. Uh, I've been here for uh, several months and kind of worked my way up from being just a rookie farm hand up to actually the foreman. So I am the foreman of this farm. Uh, this farm is all owned by Mr. Thornton. Uh, we do have a couple of other employees here that are sort of at my beck and call. Uh, we have Smithy and we have Thomas. And so those guys will be helping me out from time to time uh, here on the farm and getting everything going. And we've got quite, um, well, we've got quite the challenge, I think, ahead of us because uh, one of the things that uh, Mr. Thornton uh, wants us to do, wants us to accomplish, and uh, wants us to accomplish starting uh, next year is obviously uh, adding a couple of more fields to uh, his farming empire. And the reason why we want to do that is because times have been pretty tough here in the Cotswolds in this region of England. And uh, a lot of the land, a lot of the farms that are currently here that have been here for some time have actually been, let me just make this turn here, have actually been, uh, uh, folks have sold up and left this region. And the concern is, is that big uh, corporate farming is going to take over. And typically when they come in and when they buy up pasture land, field lands, or whatever you want to call that, um, they don't do much as far as the local community is concerned. In other words, all of the little local industry, all of the um, mom and pop type um, um, companies, those that that uh, maybe uh, buy our wheat and make bread or buy our corn to make you know whatever uh, corn meal or whatever that they they do these big corporate type farms they don't sell to the local mom and pop type shops and we have quite a few buyers here that mr thornton has been doing business with for quite some time now mr thornton is um, relatively an elderly man at this particular stage in his life and uh, he used to do all of this work himself and uh, of course with uh, with hired help and such and he has just reached a point to where that he would rather just kind of sit back and draw a little bit of a um, a little bit of a uh, income from basically all of our hard work so that is what we are basically doing uh, for him on his behalf is uh, running the farm and everything and of course like I said uh, I am uh, I am the foreman here and um, I'm quite pleased to have to have this job and uh, it has worked out wonders for me so um, how did I end up in this area well like I said I've been sort of backpacking around um, the UK uh, England Wales Scotland even um, made it over to Ireland for a little while and then ended up coming back over towards England and I was just in the area actually and uh, I was walking through like I said the Cotswolds uh, and I was picking up odd jobs doing some uh, dishwashing and just anything else that I could do and I've I've got a um, I've got a farming background um, that um, you know I, I worked on several farms in the US obviously I'm an American um, and have been, like I said, have been in the UK for a couple of years and again just kind of doing odd jobs and uh, doing whatever needed to be done on uh, wherever bit of work that I could get. I uh, did a little bit of bartending, like I said I washed dishes, um, that kind of stuff. Worked on some farms, worked on some other industry and everything 
And yes, I do have, uh, we're going to go ahead and top up our water tanker here. Uh, I do have a, uh, a visa or a work permit to be able to live and to work here in, uh, in England. And so I am legal 100%. And so, um, anyway, so I sort of stumbled onto this area of England. Again, this is uh, the, the Cotswolds area, and um, fell in love with it. Just absolutely fell in love with it, and fell in love with the people. The people here are just fantastic, uh, good-hearted, uh, good people. Like I said, Mr. Thornton, um, Smithy, and Thomas, they're all good, hard-working people. Mr. Thornton, um, you know, took a chance on me and gave me a start and um, uh, gave me a place to live. Like I said, I lived back there in those old apartments for a little while. Well, Mr. Thornton lives um, outside of the little area here. And so uh, I have moved into the, his old house, which was here at the farm. And I'm quite, uh, uh, quite pleased to have that opportunity to, uh, uh, to have a place to stay. And, um, absolutely absolutely love it so we're going to go ahead and drop our water tanker here and i'm going to give you just a little bit of a, of a tour now uh, don't get me wrong this is not designed to be a map tour or anything like that i don't really do those with my uh with my let's plays uh, videos i kind of figure that either a you guys have already seen these maps you've already seen the map reviews by the way farmer klein uh, reviewed this map many many months ago and of course this map came out in probably the april uh, time frame i think of 2017 uh, this is the dairy area obviously where we have our dairy cows we also have pigs now we're not going to do pigs on this map uh, we've got a couple of prized horses up there now those belong to mr thornton himself and so um, i am responsible for taking care of those of course for the game itself there's nothing really to do for them they're just uh, happy and content to be left alone um, so we've got a complement of different vehicles and stuff that we're going to be using and showcasing uh, throughout the let's play series and of course i am planning on doing uh, at least uh, a year and a half on this map so obviously we will finish off our first year obviously we're starting in early summer we're playing nine game day seasons and we will finish off, uh, like I said, this first year and then probably come back and at least uh, try to get to this point. If not, go ahead and finish the harvest season of year two. It kind of depends. You know, folks, I will admit I do get a bit bored with maps. Uh, I, I think that my favorite part of a map is getting things set up and getting the initial play and everything going and getting kind of through harvest and all that stuff but we will see how it goes but anyway i'm sort of thinking that this might be uh like a classic series again i think i talked about that maybe at the opening uh portion of the video where i might do um some uh you know a newer map and then kind of do a uh, older map so anyway we've got our dairy we're not going to do pigs um so we just came from our sheep area where we just gave them water and we've got a few silage bells, a few hay bells, and a few straw bells left over from uh, the year before. But um, uh, Mr. Thornton also has some, some hay and stuff stored in this barn, uh, just right there behind those doors. And so we have plenty uh, to get through the next few weeks of summer until the point to where that we can get uh, basically mowing which will obviously be something that we will do relatively soon and then of course the harvest will start coming in in the fall here are our chickens over to the right there so we do have to take care of those uh, either myself or smithy uh, usually will will do that so our main farmyard here is uh, pretty straightforward um, this reminds me a lot of Colborough Park Farm, uh, the way it's laid out, but then again, I kind of think that a lot of the, the, uh, the add-ons and stuff like that were kind of uh, from Farm Sim 15, but I also believe that Oxygen David also uh, created a lot of this stuff himself. Uh, we've got our cedars there, we've got a row crop cedar, and we've got a, uh, a regular uh, grain cedar there, so both of those have been working quite hard um, within the last... Um, uh, few weeks and getting things planted getting things going uh, we do have a little John Deere gator over there that we use to kind of run around the farm and either Smithy or um, Thomas will drive that 
over here in this barn here I'll just get out and walk you in there and show you uh, we do have a, a, a JCV there that is for uh, my good friend um, Mike uh, Reefy um, that is for him we've also got an older case we've got a, the John Deere which pretty much I like this John Deere tractor and it's almost on all of my maps it's the little 7530 and then we've got this is the largest tractor that we have in our fleet that Mr. Thomas owns this is the John Deere 8530 and of course this is what we use when we need a little bit more oomph, um, to pull something or to plow or to do something like that we will use that 8530 but then also we've got this old uh, Agristar here this dude's far uh, which I quite like this kind of reminds me of farm sim 15 and so I thought I would stick this on the map here so we've got our Pinta DB50 tipper which again is one of the finest uh, tippers that you will have we've got cultivator in that shed that I'll show you later nothing over there uh, we are running the Fent um, the smaller size Fent um, combine and then the 25 foot grain header uh, right over there. Some of this other stuff is just some uh, junk and stuff that Mr. Thornton... Uh, Mr. Thornton used to run a bus service that uh, uh, serviced the Cotswolds area here and, and kind of connected some of the other farming communities together and I'm guessing that that's uh, seen better... obviously it's seen better days and that's where it parked and sort of finished its life as a bus. Uh, we do have the mud mod install well not it's part of the map actually it's just a feature of the map the mud uh, and it's quite deep in some places actually and i think that's kind of why all the equipment is quite dirty because i've been driving through the mud doing uh, various tasks and whatnot so anyway i quite enjoy this map i quite like it a lot and there's mr thornton's prized horses right over there now, before we wrap up this episode, and of course this is just kind of an introduction episode to kind of bring you up to speed with what the project is or what the, the Let's Play is going to be. Man, those are some fine looking horses. Um, and um, this is just kind of to bring you up to speed and let you all kind of know what's going on and, and kind of kick the series off um, for you. Um, I will take you to one little place here. Uh, now, of course, when I came to this region, of England, uh, one of the things that I really wanted to see, uh, which I'm sure you'll be interested in seeing as well, let me get in the cab so I don't uh, hit you in the head with a tree limb here, is obviously this little um, uh, work of art right up here on the left. And of course, this is a representation of the very old um, Stonehenge. And um, so, this is kind of what brought me here. Uh, to this region was to obviously to see Stonehenge and so uh, I went up there and spent some time uh, and I often go up there and sort of reflect on on life and reflect on how things are you know how things are going um, with uh, with things here on life and and all of that good stuff and we're just going to go ahead and park the tractor here and we'll get out and we'll run up there uh, to Stonehenge here how you doing all right nice tie um, so, yeah, this kind of brought me to this region, Stonehenge, and again, I was here and I was sort of reflecting on life, and I had pretty much realized that I needed to kind of find something that was a little more permanent, that was a little more uh, stable, that was something that as long as I was legal to work here in the UK and basically I could, um, I could survive, I wanted to kind of find something that was a little bit more permanent. I was tired of, of you know, staying, sleeping on somebody's sofa, sleeping on a, you know, the bartender's sofa as I was helping him in his pub or, you know, whatever. I was looking for something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more stable. And so when I came to this area, obviously to see Stonehenge, um, I began wandering around, began looking at uh, at different things, different uh, different opportunities, and I'll show you where I sort of landed, and I will show you where uh, where and how that I met Mr. Thornton because that was kind of a that was kind of an odd thing. Now Mr. Thornton also has other uh, business interests here in the Cotswolds region. 
So I basically had went to Stonehenge and I was contemplating on life and thinking about what I wanted to do with my life and everything. And I happened to just kind of walk down this road here, down the side of this road. And of course, I saw this wonderful, very nice Kloss uh, dealership here. And you know, I got to think and I'm like, and of course also there's a, uh, there's a buyer here, Dalton Stores is right over there. And of course we sell a lot of our, our grains there. But um, I walked by the cloth store and I'm like, you know, let me let me go in and just see because obviously I had this background in farming, this background in agriculture. I've I've been a hard worker all of my life. It's been something that that I was born raised uh, to do. Even in the U.S. before I moved, came over here for my for my backpacking trip to you know find myself which is what a lot of people uh, do when they go backpacking through Europe or backpacking through wherever um, and you know again sort of Stonehenge was kind of instrumental in in really uh, kind of getting my thoughts together so I went in walked over there to the Kloss dealership and I walked in there and I said hey I said you know I happen to notice that there's a lot of uh, farmland around here I'm like who uh, who owns these fields and do you know if they need any work um, any help and so uh, the dealership there the class dealership said yeah well the person that you want to speak to is mr. Thornton and mr. Thornton owns the little pub down here and I'm like okay well a two plus two equals four uh, there's an opportunity for me to get a pint as well as speak to somebody who could possibly uh, help change my life uh, for the better and change uh, change my world and everything for the better. And so we've been working really hard. Look at that. That is a wonderful looking uh, field and that is a field that belongs to Mr. Thornton and so we'll be harvesting uh, that guy uh, pretty soon. So anyway, um, up along over here there is a pub and uh, this pub belongs to Mr. Thornton. It was something that he purchased um, at some some at some stage in his uh, in his life here, and so this is kind of where his interests and everything really truly lie these days is here uh, is here at the pub, and so he welcomes um, welcomes tractors and anyone else as long as they don't run over uh, their patrons. And so I came up here and uh, basically walked in, introduced myself to him. Uh, stuck my hand out there and said, hello, Mr. Thornton. My name is Jerry. I'm from the U.S. And uh, I said, I've been, you know, backpacking through uh, through Europe or through, through in actually the U.K. I've actually not been over to Europe yet. And I said, you know, I've been working odd jobs here, there, and, and pretty much everywhere. And I said, I really would like to uh, find something a little bit more stable and everything. And I said, you know, I've got a... Uh, uh, I've got a background in farming. I've worked uh, worked in agriculture a lot of my life. I said I I, I spent some time in high school um, in the Future Farmers of America program through my uh, whoa uh, through my high school, and um, and I said I would really be interested in coming to work for you. Oh, there's a gold nugget. Let's uh, pick that up. That might uh, help Mr. Thornton. We'll go see if we can trade this gold nugget in for a pint of of beer. But anyway, um, I um, I asked him, I'm like, you know, do you have any work? And he's like, well, he says, you know, as a matter of fact, I do. Um, and he sort of started talking about maybe the pub. And I'm like, well, I would be more interested in maybe working outdoors. I'm really the type of person that, you know, I'd rather be outside if I could be. Um, and uh, he says, okay, I tell you what. He says, you know, come back tomorrow and come back here to the pub he says I'll buy you lunch and uh, we'll we'll talk about you know business proposals and everything and he says by the way he says where are you staying and I said well I really don't have a place to stay at all and and Mr. Thornton said not a problem he says you can stay here at the inn and he gave me uh, he basically gave me a room for the night there at the the pub uh, at the inn and so uh, that was very very nice of him to do that and so um, Needless to say, I came back the very next day, and I walked in and um, shook my hand, gave me a good firm handshake, you know, kind of what I was used to in dealing with uh, folks in back home, back home in the U.S. And he says, well, I tell you what, Jerry, he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a shot. He says, I like you. He says, I think you're a stand-up guy. And um, he says, so basically what I want to do is I want to drive you down to the farm. I want to introduce you to a couple of guys. 
and uh, he says, you know, basically you need to just do whatever they tell you to do, um, and um, you'll be okay. So, you know, like I said, I've been around here for a couple of months. I've been working for Mr. Thornton for a couple of months. Well, uh, the old foreman uh, basically left one day and really never came back. We never heard from him again. And so, um, because I had done quite well in sort of proving myself and, and obviously, um, you know, coming to work every day, being on time, staying late, you know, really, really understanding what Mr. Thornton's goals were for the farm and everything, he, uh, he basically told me one day, he says, Jerry, he says, I want you to run the place. And he says, you know something, I want you to run it like you own it. Um, he says, if you can't do that, and if I can't trust you to do that, then we have a problem. And so I'm like, well, yes, sir, Mr. Thornton, not a problem. I can assure you that I will take very good care of all of your interests, and um, uh, I'll make you proud. And that's exactly what I have tried to do each and every, each and every day. Now, of course, uh, Mr. Thornton does have uh, quite a few older pieces of equipment. Uh, this old Keenan mixing wagon, man, this thing has seen uh, better days, but you know something, it works, it works quite well, and so uh, he basically wants us to hang on to that as much as, or as long as possible, and we will do everything that we can to keep it running, and um, I don't know, maybe I'll try to convince him into buying uh, a different model or maybe a larger model or something like that. Um, but yeah, we'll get into a lot of this uh, equipment and stuff that we're going to be using and we're going to try to do uh, different methods of fertilization. One of the other projects that we have is the UK government is really cracking down on the local farms and really trying to push farmers to be a little bit more green, a little bit more um, better for the environment. And this is a project that Mr. Thornton put in a couple of years ago, well before my time. Um, but he's also assigned, I'm um, the foreman here as well. Uh, he's got a greenhouse operation that is going here. We've got eight greenhouses producing tomatoes and uh, lettuce. And so uh, what he does is he buys manure from some of the other local farmers. And they come up here and drop their manure off. Uh, and we buy that from them here at this location. And then, of course, if we need uh, extra manure, we've got obviously our dairy that uh, produces a lot of manure there. And then also one other thing that uh, Mr. Thornton uh, started doing a few years ago, he started with one beehive, and he's basically added on, uh, we've got five now, we've got five beehives, uh, because basically, you know, the honeybee um, is very important to, um, to everything. Uh, without the honeybee, we wouldn't have uh, much of anything at all. And so, um, obviously, the Cotswolds, a uh, very beautiful area, uh, very lush, uh, lots, of, uh, lots of beautiful flowers and everything for uh, the honeybees to get their uh, nectar or whatever that they do from that and um, obviously bring it here and then uh, we harvest that. And uh, Thomas is generally in charge of the honey uh, production. He um, uh, um, gets all suited up in his little uh, honeybee costume, or not costume, but um, uh, honey, honey, honeybee gear, I suppose. And we're just now getting our greenhouses fired up, by the way, so we'll we'll do that uh, in short uh, short fashion. And then the other thing that Mr. Um, Mr. Thornton um, invested in some time ago is solar energy. And so uh, we've got these panels here. This is really the first time I've ever used these on a map, but I kind of thought, well, it will help with the storyline and uh, it'll kind of fit into that whole green thing. And so basically those solar panels provide all the energy uh, that we need here with the greenhouses as well as um, as well as with the um, uh, the beehives and that sort of stuff. And so, again, we're going to be working on getting these greenhouses going uh, in due time. And, uh, of course, you guys will get to all see that. So one other thing that uh, he installed uh, um, a few years ago, and he really didn't use it much, and I came up here one day, and I'm like, Mr. Thornton, you know, you've got this... Uh, You've got this this silo up here, and he was using it for something else. And I'm like, you know, in the U.S., um, silage.
image production is typically done in a vertical silo like this. I said there's a lot of places. I said I worked on a farm uh, for a little while that, that actually made silo uh, made silage this way. And so I basically convinced him to invest a little bit of money and get that thing going again. And so uh, we're probably still going to do silage the old-fashioned way in the silage bunker, or at least do a little bit of it. Um, but he is open to uh, producing silage this way and so we will basically uh, take advantage of that because hey it's fairly easy just bring your tippers up here and dump and uh, kind of gravity and everything takes its uh, takes its place all right well ladies and gentlemen that's really um, all that I really wanted to share with you uh, of course the storyline one other component of the storyline is that you know as I'm talking to you all um, we're gonna kind of um, uh, imagine that maybe the BBC or, or uh, maybe ITV or, or maybe it's going to be the BBC Country File program since I've talked about Country File a lot in previous episodes of Snedderton Farm will actually be covering kind of our day-to-day -day operations here on the farm so that's kind of what we're going to be doing but in any event I just wanted to thank you all so much for watching the Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel and I hope that you will return back again very soon for yet another uh, as I climb up on the tractor wheel there for another um, episode of uh, Thornton Farm again I appreciate you coming in and really we haven't done anything it's kind of been a episode of much about nothing but I hopefully I've set the storyline for you and um, probably with episode two uh, we will start getting the greenhouses going we may need to tend to the animals just a little bit and then I think our major project uh, is going to need to be sort of divided into two different uh, areas and of course I'll get Smithy and Thomas uh, working as well because again uh, the foreman got to keep your employees busy um, but we'll get them fertilizing and then we need to start mowing we need to start mowing and um, uh, collecting grass and baling hay so uh, obviously we've got lots of fields to do that with and we've got some pretty cool equipment by the way uh, I do want to thank uh, my good friend Duck Zorley uh, and if you haven't checked out his YouTube channel the link is down below uh, he turned me on to these uh, John Deere mowers so those are going to look fantastic uh, with the John Deere and of course um, you know John Deere is a big player here in the UK um, our hay trailer is painted up as John Deere uh, color I, I actually did that myself uh, for Mr. Thornton. That was a, a hunk of junk, and I got him to uh, uh, give buy us some new tires. So we got some Michelin tires, and then we painted that up, and I decided to paint that up as John Deere green. And then we've also got a John Deere square baler. So at the moment, we actually have two balers. We have a square baler and a round baler. Um, and we'll kind of see which one is going to work out best for us. Again, I'm thinking about doing silage, um, the traditional method, both using this bunker here as well as our silo up the hill, and then also um, maybe doing some round silage bells as well. It kind of depends. It kind of depends, folks. Um, Mr. Thornton in the past has sold uh, hay, straw, and silage uh, to other local farmers and so he wants to kind of continue that and it's a good money earner you know to be quite honest anyway thank you all so much for watching I really appreciate it I'm really going to try hard to stay um, in the role play and kind of I'll leave Snedderton Farm for my uh, rants and my talks about you know farm sim and all that kind of stuff and things that I'm doing in my life and I'm going to try to uh, get Thornton Farm to be a little bit more role playing where we kind of will expand on some of the stuff that I've already told you so anyway um, I've gone over 30 minutes here and I appreciate your time and I hope that you will return again very very soon as I always say take good care of yourselves and also take good care of each other please visit all the YouTube YouTube um, folks, my YouTube friends that I have a link down below the video, please visit their YouTube pages and give them a big subscribe and a big thumbs up and also check out the Three Dudes Gaming Network and PCSG, both links are down below as well. Uh, again, take good care of yourselves, take good care of each other, come back again very soon to both Snedderton Farm as well as Thornton Farm, my two current maps. Um, again, thank you, God bless you, bye bye.